Welcome back to the Path to Happiness, our introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. In our last session, we covered the story of Noah that was so heroic but ended in failure. By that time, the human race wasn't doing so well. But God's love does not change, and His plan is perfect. God called Abraham, and within three generations, God turns out to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham is considered the father of faith by three great world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. How did that happen? The story of Abraham and his descendants is rich and powerful. We'll start in on it now. God chose Abraham to take Adam's and Noah's position. Abraham was called after this indemnity period of 400 years and 10 generations from the time of Noah. God blessed him. God said, I will make you into a great nation and will make of you a blessing to all nations. Abraham, originally called Abram, was the son of Terah, an idol worshiper. His wife, Sarai, later called Sarah, with Abraham, followed a course of taking their family and their possessions and leaving their home, Haran, the land of his ancestors, and going to Canaan. This foreshadowed the Messiah's course to restore all the people and the creation from the satanic world to the world of God. The course that they went to Canaan and then they went to Egypt and back again to Canaan became the model course for the chosen people. As do all God's people, Abraham needed to establish a foundation of faith and a foundation of substance. He was the central figure for the offering in his family, called by God at 75 years of age. Abraham obeyed God's word to go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Genesis 12, verse 1. He left his homeland in faith, but his journey was not at all peaceful. His tribe had to keep moving as nomads amid the dwellers of the inhospitable land. Abram, not able to attain even a small patch of land for his tent, could not stay in Canaan, and he moved into the hills, further and further into the hills, continually kicked out and moved and pushed back and back. So his tribe continued south toward the Arabian desert. During this period, he experienced a peculiar providential incident. His wife, Sarai, was taken from him by the Pharaoh of Egypt and then returned back to him. What was going on with that? Abraham was in Egypt with his family due to a famine. Abraham's wife, Sarai, was very beautiful, and Abram feared that he would be killed if it were known that she was his wife. Abraham asked Sarai to promise to say that she was his sister. Actually, this was partially true because they were half-brother, half-sister. They had the same father. The Pharaoh's servants saw Sarai and reported about her to the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh desired her and had her brought into the palace. But God acted. He caused great plagues to fall on the Pharaoh and his house. And the Pharaoh realized it was because he had taken Sarai and that she was actually Abram's wife. And the Pharaoh, to his great credit, returned Sarai to Abraham. By the principle, we know what was going on here. We know the indemnity condition that Abram, Sarai, and the Pharaoh made. It goes back to Adam and Eve, who were born as brother and sister. They were to have grown as brother and sister and then become husband and wife with God's blessing. However, <clears throat> the archangel stole the sister, Eve, and defiled her. Abram and Sarai took the position of brother and sister, like Adam and Eve. And the Pharaoh was in the position of Satan trying to steal the sister. But, unlike Satan, he released her back 
to be Abram's wife, Adam's wife. Thus they reversed the course of the fall. On this foundation, Abram was to restore the foundation of faith. The conditional objects to be offered for the foundation of faith were a heifer, a ram and a goat, and a dove and pigeon. And Abraham was to sacrifice these on an altar. They symbolized the foundations of Adam's family and Noah's family that Satan had claimed. The dove symbolized the formation stage, the first stage. Why? Well, when Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of God descended like a dove, representing the Old Testament age, which was the formation stage. Then, John called Jesus the Lamb of God, bringing in the New Testament age. So the ram symbolized the second stage, the growth stage. Then when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The heifer symbolizes the completion stage, the completed testament age, after the second advent of the Lord is the age of a heifer, a female uh, cow, the age of a wife. Samson, for example, referred to his wife as a heifer in the Old Testament. Jesus came as the bridegroom to all of us. And so the saints, until the time of the second advent, each become a bride to Jesus, who is the bridegroom to come. But this is metaphorical. At the wedding feast of the Lamb, the bride actually becomes a physical wife united into perfect oneness with the Lord, with the Lamb. Then all will be able to receive the holy marriage blessing through them and live in the heavenly kingdom of God with Christ. Thus, the symbolic offering of Abraham was to restore all at once, horizontally, through these three kinds of offerings, the symbolic condition of indemnity of the entire vertical providence through the three generations of Adam, Noah, Abraham, the Old Testament, New Testament, and completed Testament ages. These three sacrificial objects represented also the three stages of growth that Adam and Eve were to have completed with Abraham as the representative of Adam. The three sacrifices were to restore horizontally the providence from the time of Adam, which had been carried out vertically. In making the offering, God instructed Abraham to cut the offerings in two and lay each half over against the other. Abraham was supposed to cut all the offerings even the small doves. Abraham cut the heifer, cut the ram and the goat in two, but he didn't cut the doves in two. And the symbolic offering was a failure. Birds of prey came down onto the altar and defiled it, and Abraham drove them away. Why was the offering defiled? Why couldn't God accept it? There are four very important reasons for this. Why? Because it relates to why the sacrifices had to be divided, all of them. First, it was to restore the position of having separated Adam into good and evil positions, Cain and Abel. Second, it was to restore the position of separating good and evil at the time of the 40-day flood judgment in the providence of restoration centering on Noah. Third, it was to set up the, the symbolic condition of separating the world of God's sovereignty from the world under the dominion of Satan. Fourth, it was to signify purifying or getting rid of the blood of death, which had entered from Eve and Adam's false love relationship with the archangel. The act of not dividing the doves resulted in allowing the ram and the heifer also to be claimed by Satan as well, because the doves were the formation stage 
on which the other stages were established. Abraham fell asleep as the birds of prey defiled the offering. And God came to him in his sleep and told him that his descendants would live as slaves in Egypt for 400 years. Subsequently, God called Abraham to make the symbolic offering at a much greater cost by offering his own son, Isaac. And the providence was prolonged for three generations until Jacob. What a trial to have God tell you to offer your son. It's one of the most dramatic events in biblical history about which entire books have been written. The principle shows just how important this event is in God's history and how it led to an even greater victory of love between enemies. Thank you for listening and may God bless us in fulfilling His will.